Here's example four with finding global or absolute mins and maxes uh, on closed and bounded interval here. Um, so find the absolute extrema of h of t equals 4e to the t divided by t squared plus 1 on the closed bounded interval from negative 1 to 2. Okay. So again, since we're on a closed and bounded interval, um, you know, we just have the shorter process to follow. So find all the critical points of the function on the interval, evaluate the function at each critical point and at each endpoint, and then just interpret the results. Largest value is the max, smallest is the min. So that's all we have to do here. Um, now, you know, the function is it's a quotient, so we're going to have to use the quotient rule. Uh, I mean, we could rewrite the function and then maybe do like a product rule with a chain rule, but it's going to be a little messy, and that actually won't help us out very much. So let's just go ahead and do quotient rule. So um, h primed of t equals, so remember quotient rule says the derivative is going to be uh, the bottom times the derivative of the top. So it's going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top. So the top is 4 e to the t. So the, the derivative of e to the t, remember that's just e to the t. And then the constant multiple 4, um, constant multiples, they just stay in derivatives. Constant multiples stay. So uh, this is the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So the bottom is t squared plus 1. So the derivative is 2t plus 0, or just 2t. And then all divided by the bottom squared. So we can't forget that part, divide by the bottom squared. OK. Um, so you know, leave the bottom as it is. You know, we don't want to expand that. We pretty much uh, almost never want to do that. But what we could do is simplify the top. So usually what we want to do is uh, we do want to expand on the top normally. But actually, in this case, let's do something a little bit different. So here, this is something times 4e to the t minus something else times 4e to the t. So let's pull out this common factor of 4e to the t. So if we pull out 4e to the t on the top, then what are we going to have? t squared plus 1 and then minus 2t, okay, minus 2t. All right, so if we pull out this uh, 4e to the t out of the entire top, we have this left over, t squared plus 1, and then minus 2t, minus 2t. And the bottom stays the same. OK, so this is our derivative here. Here's our derivative, h prime to t. So now we want to figure out where's the derivative of 0 and where is it undefined. So first of all, where is this undefined? Well, it's, you know, it's a fraction, so it's going to be undefined if the bottom is 0. Okay, but t squared plus 1 squared, that never equals 0 okay, for any real value of t. Okay, so there are no real values of t that make the denominator 0. Um, so you know, that's just never going to happen. So, and also, there aren't any other domain restrictions anywhere. You know, e to the t, t can be anything. This is just a polynomial in here, so t can be anything. So no restrictions. Uh, there's going to be no value of t that makes this uh, undefined. So we're OK there. Now we just want to know, where is this equal to 0? So we take this guy, set it equal to 0, solve for t. So uh, remember, um, a fraction like this, a rational function, or I guess it's not really a rational function because of the e, but um, you know, just a fraction, any kind of fraction is going to be 0 when the top is 0. So let's just ignore the bottom and take the top and set it equal to 0. Yeah, because remember, you know, the whole thing equals 0 when just the top is 0. So let's go ahead and set the top equal to 0. So uh, 4 e to the t times, let's rewrite this as t squared minus 2t plus 1. So we'll rewrite it like that. Uh, t squared minus 2t plus 1 equals 0. And remember, we can just set the top equal to 0, because if the top is 0, then the entire thing is 0. We want to know when is this whole derivative equal to 0. Okay, so uh, we want to set h prime to t equal to 0. All right? So h prime to t equals 0. That's going to happen when just the top is 0. All right, so uh, basically this means 4e to the t is 0, or uh, this other guy is 0, t squared minus 2t plus 1 equals 0. 4e to the t, that's never 0, okay? So remember, uh, exponential functions, okay, first of all, 4, you know, doesn't really do anything for us. We can divide both sides by 4, and we'll just have e to the t equals 0, okay? So 0 divided by 4 is 0. So uh, e to the t, there is no value of t that makes e to the t equal to 0, okay? So this will never happen, okay? But over here, what can happen over here? Well, t squared minus 2t plus 1, uh, remember, that's uh, t minus 1 squared, right? Or t minus 1 times t minus 1. So then uh, this means that uh, t minus 1 uh, equals 0, okay? Or, you know, it's, it's two of the same factors, so t minus 1 times t minus 1, so basically t minus 1 equals 0. Or, you know, we could just take the square root of both sides. 
Um, so t minus 1 equals plus or minus 0, but, you know, that's, you know, plus or minus 0 is just the same thing as 0. So uh, t equals 1 is actually uh, the only critical point that we get. Okay, so we want to make sure, is it in the interval um, from negative 1 to 2? Yeah, it is. Okay, so 1 is between negative 1 and 2, so we're okay there. So we only have one critical point, and it is in the interval that we're looking at, so we do want to uh, consider it. Okay, so um, that's step one, find all the critical points of the function on the interval. So the function only has one critical point, and it is in the interval, so that's good. Okay, so now step two, uh, evaluate the function at each critical point and at both endpoints. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's uh, erase all this now, and we'll do step two. All right, so our critical point was uh, t equals 1, so we just had the 1. So uh, critical point uh, t equals 1. Okay. And again, since we're at a closed bounded interval, we don't have to do the first derivative test or anything like that. You know, we still could if we wanted to, but it's just uh, so much extra work, and we just don't really even need to. So let's go ahead and go through this then. Uh, so now we just have to evaluate the function at t equals 1 and negative 1 and 2. So let's see, uh, h of 1 equals uh, 4 times e to the 1 over uh, 1 squared plus 1. Okay. So this is just uh, 4e over, so 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2, 4e over 2, so this is a uh, 2e. Okay, so that's, you know, pretty nice number, not too bad. Um, we'll get to approximations later once we do all of these. So that's h of 1. Now, that's uh, the function at the critical point, the only critical point we have. So now we evaluate the function at both endpoints. So h of negative 1 equals uh, 4e to the negative 1 over negative 1 squared plus 1. All right? And now this is uh, 4e to the negative 1 over negative 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2. So this is uh, 4e to the negative 1 over 2 which is 2e to the negative 1, or, you know, we could write that as 2 over e. Uh, either way is fine. So now uh, h of 2, okay, so that's at one endpoint, now we do the other endpoint, h of 2, is uh, 4e squared, okay, 4, uh, so h of t is 4e to the t over t squared plus 1, so h of 2 is 4e to the 2, or 4e squared over 2 squared plus 1. Okay. 2 squared plus 1. So this is a uh, 4e squared over 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. All right? And we really can't simplify that a whole lot or at all. So now, um, okay, that's pretty much it for step 2. Evaluate the function at each critical point and at both endpoints. So we only had one critical point and uh, always have two endpoints here. So now we have, okay, 2e, 2 over e, and 4e squared over 5. So now we just have to see uh, what are the approximate values of those. Okay, so remember step three is, you know, the largest is the max, the smallest is the min. So, you know, it's hard to tell at a glance which is the largest, which is the smallest. Uh, this right here is probably the smallest, but, you know, between these two here, uh, we want to be a little careful with that. So let's go ahead and, if we toss those into a calculator, then what we'll see is uh, this is approximately equal to, uh, let's see, to about 5.437. All right. And 2 over e is about equal to uh, 0 0.736. All right, and then 4e squared over 5 is about equal to uh, 5.911. So that's, you know, actually just a tiny bit larger than this, not even, you know, one half uh, a unit, you know, 5.911, 5.437. Um, just a tiny bit larger than this. So uh, this is the largest value here. Okay, this guy is the largest, and this guy uh, is the smallest here. So here's our smallest, here's our largest. So now we just uh, write down the answer to be thorough, uh, like we always do. <coughs> so let's come up off to the side here and write that. So uh, section off a piece over here. The Uh, global or absolute, same thing either way, global or absolute, uh, max uh, is y equals, and remember it was this 4e squared over 5. So we don't want to say 5.911. This is just an approximation that we got from the calculator. Okay, so we don't want to use decimals here. We want to use the exact value. Okay, 4e squared over 5 
is y equals 4e squared over 5. Okay. Need a better marker here. 4e squared over 5, uh, and it happens at uh, x equals, so that happened at x equals 2, right? That happened at 2, at the rightmost endpoint here, at x equals 2. All right. And uh, let me use a different marker for this next one. And uh, the global min, the global min uh, is, so which one was the global min? It was this guy here, 2 over e, okay? Because it was about 0.736, which was the smallest of these three values here. So 2 over e, um, and that happened at x equals negative 1, so the other endpoint. So the global min is y equals 2 over e, okay? And it happens at x equals uh, negative 1, okay? So, you know, we had a critical point here that had the value 5.437, but that was neither the global max nor the global min, so that might happen sometimes where, you know, both just happen at the endpoints. And remember, that's an extreme value thing, so it just goes all the way back to that uh, extreme value theorem thing, I mean. So that was a, a bunch of videos ago we talked about the extreme value theorem. That's kind of the, the background of what's happening here. But anyway, this is our answer here. Um, and if we wanted to be even more thorough, I guess we should say the global max of h of t on negative 1 to 2 is this at that. The global min of h of t on this interval is this at that. Okay. So uh, that's the answer for example 4 with global mins and maxes.